and welcome back. Now today I've got a couple of little tiny development boards here. Well, it's the same development board, just two variants of. And you can probably read just there, it says 80 tiny 13. Uh, so the idea is you have an 80 tiny 13 in here. You have various bits plugged around the peripherals and it just makes development so much easier. Now, it's true, it does make life a lot easier when you're playing about with an AT Tiny 13 because all this is is effectively, let me hold this up to the camera a bit more. Um, each one of these pins, well, apart from, well, you know, even VCC and ground actually, each one of these pins is connected to this side of these jumpers there and there. And the other side of the jumper is then connected to what it says. So, for example, yeah, VCC is connected to VCC, you'd expect that. But uh, PB2, for example, is connected to key 2. So it's this one down here. Uh, can't see it, that one there. Okay, and PB1 is connected to key 1. And PB0 is connected to LED1, which is somewhere up here. Well, you can read it as well as I can, LED1. Uh, and so forth, right? So basically, they're all connected to various bits and pieces. Just to make that sort of initial debugging phase, does this work, you know, um, useful? I want to give a shout out to PCB Way, PCB prototype, the easy way. Just enter the dimensions of your PCB, choose the number of PCBs you want and the layers, and hit the Quote Now button. Here you have options to select just about anything you'd ever want on a PCB. I tend to leave mine on the defaults because it's the quickest shipping option with green solder mask and white silk screen. As an example, here's a board that I had made. This is a panelised board, but it worked absolutely wonderfully. Here it is when I've partially made up one of the boards. So simple and a high quality PCB. If you don't fancy making it yourself, you can also go for their assembly process. For the assembly service, you can get 20 pieces for just $30, and you get free shipping thrown in as well. Why don't you have a look at their website and try them out now? And I thought, well, is it actually useful, or is it just some kind of marketing hype? Because it does seem rather simplistic. But there's actually a bit more going on here than perhaps would first uh, appear to the naked eye. That thing there is an on-off, so basically if I push that, the whole thing is dead. And if I switch it back on again, that's it, springs into life. That is a 5 volt to 3.3 volt converter, so you can try it on both voltages. This power thing here, incidentally, this power plug, goes to a USB socket, so it's 5 volts in. Um, there's a variable resistor there, which is connected to one of these. They are at PB3, that says, and that goes to the ADC, basically this thing here. Um, there's another LED there, and that's about it. So that's uh, reset. Okay, yeah, so that's it. So you've got the reset button here, you've got the two keys, you've got a couple of LEDs up here. And it just gives you that opportunity to think, if I were to put this bit of code on here, is it going to hang together? The initial stuff, you know. And I thought, mm, I don't know if it's really going to be worth it, because it's not that cheap. Um, certainly two cups of coffee i believe in this case not that anybody's going out for coffee these days of course well other than takeaway but um yeah it's well let's have a look um where i got it from and uh, you can make your own minds up on this right here we are in banggood now as you can see it says there which i can just about read uh, yeah do stay tuned because i've got a bit of an announcement to make about this channel at the end that i think you'll probably need to listen to but anyway uh, seven dollars 81 free shipping of course you can get this from other outlets i think aliexpress do it a little bit cheaper but then sometimes you think you have to pay shipping so there's not a lot in it frankly and of course aliexpress can take a bit longer i say a bit considerably in some cases depending where you live in the world i found aliexpress to be hmm, okay you know but the trouble with aliexpress i find is that if you want to pay more to have it tracked that's one thing it might be a, a dollar or two but if you want it quick no chance i mean it's it's silly money whereas banggood if you want it quick four to nine days you can normally pay well anything i've had it from 30 cents up to four dollars depending on what it is you're buying i don't know how they work it out whether it's the value of your order or something or the weight of your order i don't know but i've had stuff from banggood uh, turn up in a week so you know it can be done i think there's some kind of um in the uk anyway there's some kind of relationship between china post and the 
post office in the UK. And I think they've got some kind of agreement or fast tracking mechanism. I don't know. I have read it, though. This is all allegedly because I can't prove it. I haven't got any clippings or anything. But I have heard that there's some quick, quick route from China to the UK. Anyway, back to the price. So $7.81. And I thought, hmm, that's a good couple of coffees, isn't it? Decent large coffees, possibly with cream on top. So I thought, is it really worth it? So anyway, I, I took a punt and I, I thought, I'll just try it out. After all, $7.81, yeah, you know, reinvest the channel money. So let's have a look. So basically, uh, when I got this, I thought, what am I going to put on here? I know I can put my fridge alarm on here. But before I even got to that stage... Um, Nerd Ralph, that's Ralph Doncaster, who's communicated with me regarding my uh, fridge alarm. Do you remember the fridge alarm that I had that, um, well, self-imposed challenge to say, can I put the functionality of my existing fridge door alarm onto an 89 Tiny 13? Or was it all just a brain dead chip? And as it turned out, yes, I could, except for one item. And that was the, the single touch switch that you can do in an Arduino, but it takes a lot of memory. Uh, capacitive touch sensor, really. It uses two pins on an Arduino, but you set it all up. It's just one resistor and one capacitor on an Arduino, but it requires two pins. And it basically works by charging up the capacitor and then detecting that you're touching the pin or the wire or whatever. And it's quite clever. I've got it on Benny's um, outdoor run. Um, so there's an on-off switch in there. And inside, if you remember, I've shown you a couple of times now, the indoor module in that rather nice case. There's a little thing on the top that I just touch to turn it on and off. Uh, so it works really well. And, of course, it's on the, the fridge door alarm. So that, that's it. It's, it's great, but it does require two pins. So, of course, on the AT Tiny 13, one, I haven't got two pins spare anymore. I've got one, but not two. So I said, that's the only thing I can't do. So... Nerd Ralph, Ralph Doncaster, said, do you know what? I've been playing about with this code, and guess what? I've got a bit of code here, 40 bytes, and you can have a single pin touch sensitive sensor. And I thought, 40 bytes? Anyway, so I downloaded his code, which I'll show you now. Here it is. Um, actually, I, I can't read the screen from here. I'm going to have to squint. Okay, that's Okay, that's his code. Yeah, we'll talk about this in a minute. And, uh, of course, I put it onto a, a blank AT Tiny 13, and it wasn't 40 bytes. It was like 106, I think it was. And no matter what I did, no matter what core I used, um, it stayed at around about 106, you know, 108, 104. It was always around that. So I emailed them. I go, I can't get it down to 40. What, what have I done that you, you, you haven't done, rather, what you did? And he goes, well, remember a blank sketch with nothing in it just a, a, an empty setup and an empty loop is going to take you 40 50 bytes anyway just just that i'm thinking dull of course i'm putting this on an empty sketch so it's the 40 50 bytes anyway plus the code so no wonder it brings it up to around about the 100 bytes mark so what i need to do is plug this code into my existing fridge alarm sketch uh, which um, I'm, I'm slightly sheepishly saying I haven't actually done yet because I just haven't had enough time. Anyway, the point is, um, running like this, it's about 106 bytes, although he has brought it down. He said he's tweaked it a little bit. And he says, yes, it is 40 bytes when you put it into a sketch. And I thought, hmm, how does it work? And is it any good? Well, I'm not casting aspersions on Mr. Doncaster's code, not in any way. He's the guru of things like this. So anyway, I thought, well, I'll load it up. Now, you may have noticed, actually, this says AT Tiny 85 up here, not AT Tiny 13. And there's a good reason for that. Back to the workbench, because, OK, this is the, the board I got. Yeah, and as you can see, it's just got that AT Tiny 13 in the middle. Now, the AT Tiny 13 is normally um, a fairly narrow bodied thing. Let me just get my pointer on my fat finger. So you can see here the width of this chip is a little bit thinner than what an AT Tiny 85 would be, for example. But I thought, mm, do you know what? I could whip that chip off and put an AT Tiny 85 in there and have the same functionality for an AT Tiny 85. Ooh, would that work? And, um, well, this morning, I've already spent about two hours doing it because I couldn't see what I was doing. I whipped the 13 off, having measured it first, of course, that this was actually going to fit by squishing the legs up a little bit, just pushing them down on my workbench to move these legs in a little bit. So they are splayed out quite a bit. 
and lo and behold it fitted on as i knew because in my um 80 tiny 85 stroke 13 touch on off um i designed the pcb for that with an 80 tiny 13 thinking well an 80 85 will fit in its place anyway wrong as we've just found out the 80 tiny 85 is a much fatter chip in fact if i hold these up side by side you'll see see the difference okay same way up then you'll probably get a better idea now the one on the right is 13 one on the left is the 85 and you can see a noticeable difference in width the one on the right the 13 is um i think it's 200 mils wide i think it's a jedek um small outline size which is smaller than most eight pin dip chips or surface mount chips like this so it's so yeah you just have to bear that in mind and the easiest way on the pcb is just make the the um, pads for the feet a little bit longer so both would fit on very easily uh, and in fact that's the way i've adjusted my pcb now so that it does work like that anyway it's no problem doing that like this so you just push the little legs in on you know push down on the on the workbench just to bring them in line with the body really and it's really no trouble to solder those in took me a little bit longer than normal because obviously i can't see you that well can't even get the solder on the end of the iron these days but anyway um so i put the 80 tiny 85 on there there's nothing else to do because it's literally just a chip on a on a board connected up to various peripherals isn't it um so and then i loaded up his code so the code that you just saw uh, this one here this is the 80 tiny 85 version identical to the 13 version i haven't done anything and as you can see um so there's two leds there one's on all the time i think that's probably the power one and if i touch this this wire so you can see it there's the wire if i touch that it goes on so that's the touch sensor now it's it is it is self calibrating so if i squeeze this wire pretty hard um it still goes on let me get a bit of blue tack and stick that to the surface before i chuck it across the workshop just one moment please okay here we are back again right so here's the bit of wire stuck into whatever that pb number is and i can't read that from here it must be one of the earlier ones pb3 i think um oh i've got the code here let me just have a look at that that'll tell me um the led is on four and the touch wire is on three but i don't think it makes much difference um, and if i touch it that led goes on you see that now this is self calibrating so the reason you saw these pliers initially in the shot not only were they holding that down in place um, i wanted to show you how the self calibration works which is exactly what happens on the arduino library one so if i was to hold that pin with this pair of pliers as you'd expect it goes on that led because it's obviously found extra capacitance hasn't it but if i turn this off and then turn it back on again it's now going to self calibrate with this on it so you could put um, you know a longer wire on or connect this pin to a, a washer or a touch pad or something so now if i touch my pliers it will go on see so it's also calibrating absolutely genius work mr doncaster yes very pleased with that oh yeah okay i've made a small modification to the code because the way um ralph had it was that it was a toggle so you touched it and it went on touched it again and went off and that worked fine slight uh, downside if you touched it and held your finger on then of course it would toggle on and off uh, rather than remain in one state that's easy enough to fix but i thought well actually my current fridge alarm you touch it let go and the led state stays on um, door opens and it goes off uh, which means of course my this whole thing about touching as a as a momentary action i didn't actually have to do but i've done it now so you're going to have two versions of the code ralph's original code and ralph this ralph's slightly modified code to allow it act as a toggle now this is the 13 version exactly the same code no difference whatsoever and i did wonder whether the um references to you know some of the the pins and things on here as you can see all this stuff here i thought is this going to be exactly the same on um you know each of the chips oh do excuse the color um scheme i've got running at the moment this is what's known as a high contrast color scheme i was going to switch it off before i start recording i forgot uh, it just makes it easier for my eyes because white white the bright white of the screen really does play havoc with the the existing eye that i got oh yeah my appointment was cancelled by the way 
uh, the one for March 21st, that's this Saturday coming up, cancelled. All operations cancelled, all non-essential ones. Yeah, let's not go there. Right, so on this um, version here then, the AT Tiny 13 version, as you can see, this works exactly the same way and the self-calibration bit works identically and there's no difference. Um, so this is what I mean about how useful these little boards are. Even though they're $7.81 a piece, I think they're absolutely wonderful for those very quick sketches you just want to do and see whether something hangs together without having to plug stuff into breadboards. Now this header, I'll show you on this one, it's easier. This header is a 10-way header, which is what you get with all um, USB to serial converters, normally a 10-way, and then you plug in a little converter and put it down to 6-way for an Arduino, for example. Um, so I dug one out, and as it happened, I dug out the um, USB um, ASP version. In fact, I can't show you. Look, it's, it's tied on at the back, so I wanted to show you the... Um, let me show you something else first to do with this. When you plug this one in, so this isn't an FTDI now. This is, a, as it says on there, uh, USB ASP. It's upside down, but there you can see what it says. Yeah, um, This does not enumerate as a port right let me show you the the ports that i've got currently on my machine and you'll see where it is let me just switch over stand by here we are right so normally the ports would be oh, come on come on right down here now the leonardo that's my uh, window switching thingy the com 13 one that's my smartphone charger works like a dream i've got to say it's been charging up and letting my phone cycle anyway that's a different video we'll come on to that in the future brilliant though um i set myself <laughs> well somebody's got to haven't they uh, but look as you can see here look this is this is enumerated itself usb asp that's the device itself but it's come up as this um lib usb k usb device if that's a driver you need to install it's a it's a two second job it really is oh investigate a little bit more just to see what driver it is I installed for my STM32. But I've also got a little thinking I might have uninstalled it again because it had no effect. But anyway, that's what you need to do. And when you upload, you have to upload via a programmer, of course, and the, and the program is called USB ASP. Nothing else, all right? USB ASP. And it finds it and, and does the business as you'd expect. But an FTDI on the end of here would work just as well. It just happened to be that that's the first one I got out of the box. And I thought, well, oh, we'll try this for a change. You know, it works just as well. So that's it. So that's that's the little tiny difference between that and an FTDI. So that's the device again that I found on Banggood. As I say, they do have it at AliExpress and probably other cases as well. I think even Amazon does it actually. Um, obviously that 80 tiny 13, I'm gonna to have to rub off on one of mine and put 85 in its place so I don't get confused. And the USB ASP device, okay, if you type this into Banggood, um, you get quite a few come up, as you can see here. Um, the browser is deliberately made small, the window's small, so you can see it. Now, my one is the cheapest one on here. I think it's that one. Uh, yeah, 266 USB, so that's the one there. Why there are other ones here that cost more, I have absolutely no idea. But if you notice this one here, the cable comes in at the top rather than on the end, like mine, like this one here, which I think this one works better, I think, than having the cable at right angles to the board. They are both 3.3 and 5 volt selectable, so there's no difference there. They both come with this cable. So I'm not really sure why there's all these various options. There's other ones down here, look. That's the adapter I was telling you about, you know, from the 10 pin to the six pin, so you can plug it into your Arduino. ICSP socket, um, which I've got a couple of. So let's just have a look at this. It's, it's pretty cheap, $2. Is it going to go into dollars or pounds? Yeah, dollars. $2.66, which is what? A couple of quid, free shipping. Absolutely worth getting one, I think. Just just um, have one you know, lying about so you can play about with it. That is exactly the version I got, version 2.0. LC technology. Yep, that's it. Anyway, $2.66. That is a cup of coffee, barely a cup of coffee, frankly, these days. So yeah, I'll put the, the links of both those items down below, but um, have a look around, you know, to see if you can get it either cheaper or faster shipping or whatever, okay. Now there's one more thing I want to tell you in this video, um, more code, do you remember my AS, no, no it's not. Do you remember my 
80 tiny 13 was it a 13 or an 85 not sure oh there it is there it is in the window there it was a video about the on off kill thing because i was trying to emulate a rather expensive chip and i said we could do it a lot cheaper than that surely with something and uh, i use an as 80 tiny 85 that worked great and yeah it went out there and everybody says oh it's quite useful actually about to shut down in this controlled manner so the 80 tiny 85 says oh you've you've pressed the off switch tells the whatever it is you got attached to it in my case it was an arduino the arduino recognized that it had been told via an interrupt did its close down business you know like shutting down stuff sd cards and whatnot and then sent a reply back to the 80 tiny 85 saying okay you can shut off the power now and it did now what um, i've had is a bit of reworked code uh, sent to me well it's on the github actually so let's have a look at that here we are um, now this is shaggy dog 18 well it, it's not actually his name believe it or not <laughs> um, this is um i believe it's pronounced serge i'm not 100 percent sure but oh, there we are there's his name that's that's the comment that he put up there so he said look i've reworked your code basically and made it better because it was a a bit of a mess no he didn't say that at all but uh, he's reworked it now the readme says this is all the improvements he's made and it's a rather nice bit of code um, i haven't actually run it yet because he puts it into sleep and all things like that so i really want to run that and just see how it works but i'm sure it's absolutely fine he's obviously tested it so i'm going to put a link to this code uh, both on that previous video that i mentioned and in this video just so you can have a look at it because if you're interested in that on off control um, then this could be a better bit of code to run that with especially if he's got the sleep bit working um, for like a battery and things and i imagine i don't know how he's done it but if he's got a sleep on the 80 tiny 85 then it must be woken up again by an interrupt i guess so that yeah that's the only way to wake things up so um, yeah that'd be very interesting to do and uh, yeah good stuff I'm, I'm, it's nice it's really nice and very flattering actually to see somebody take something that you've created and then say do you know what i was so interested in that i've reworked this and look here's a better version now that's that's the wonder of open source isn't it we all get better stuff out of it i mean where would we be without open source <laughs> no arduino that's for sure okay i think that was probably about it um yeah let's have a look make sure i've got a few other things on here ah okay um nerd ralph ralph doncaster has also started work i hope he doesn't mind me saying this because um this is new stuff he's writing something called pico core now if you've noticed over the last few videos we've had um, mini core micro core and now pico core um, to get it absolutely down to the minimum and as he says in his readme he's only going to support the stuff that works i don't know well or natively or easily but it's, it's a work in progress it's not ready yet i've asked him to keep me in the loop when it is ready uh, so i can beta test it or just verify it or whatever and uh, then i'll tell you guys again but it's interesting once again that people are using these very small microcontrollers 80 tiny 13s and 45s and 44s and 85s and whatever to do quite a bit otherwise there'd be no point in doing this sort of work would there so um ralph doncaster obviously thinks there's value in doing this so that'll be interesting to see what comes up uh, later well we're not going to say this year i'm sure this is going to be done within a couple of months or so cool okay right finally just before i go um i mentioned rather bitterly i must admit that um my appointment to have my pre-op for this eye was cancelled and there are no plans for operations uh, to do any eye surgery at the moment at all uh, as you heard the uk government has said all non-essential surgery is out the window uh, so that includes me obviously non-essential so with that in mind um over the last what three four five videos i've been doing stuff that's moderately easy to show you things like this i don't have to do soldering and little fine work i can't actually focus very well on this computer screen in front of me it's too far away i might have to get these glasses changed now or this lens here just so i can focus on stuff but it's becoming increasingly difficult for me to find subject matter that i can do in this show and tell way rather than doing and i must have four or five projects up there ready well not ready but you know prepared component wise to show you but i do need much better eyesight so i think 
unfortunately I'm going to have to do these videos in a bit more of an ad hoc manner so not every Friday now it will be as and when I can get something together because it's it's really quite a struggle and I don't I'm not doing this for the old sympathy the violin not doing it for that I'm just saying it's just awkward now um, I was hanging on by my fingernails for this thing to get done but obviously it's not going to be at the moment so videos will be done as and when please don't abandon me in my time of need stay with me and uh, all will be well as things move on obviously the um, car owner virus is is really screwing the world at the moment let alone me so I'm not gonna you know moan too much what do you mean I have already all right <laughs> let's cut the moaning out we'll just see what happens in the future but don't expect a video every single week now which is a bit of a shame for me because I love doing them but it is getting just a little bit awkward to say the least however if you like this video and if you like these little tiny boards which as I say at about eight dollars you might think oh I don't know but I'm very pleasantly surprised at this uh, and please in fact I bought two with my own money would you believe yes because I thought wow that is so useful and if you take off the 13 off one and put an 85 on it um, well it just makes it even more adaptable doesn't it for simple little things so you can press keys you know you can use the variable resistor and whatnot I think I think it's worthwhile anyway right okay now if you like this video I'm hoping it's a bit shorter than normal um, do please tell YouTube that you liked it by giving it the old thumbs up I love your comments down below I do get quite a few comments and I do as you notice um, respond to well all of them really um, what the, the trouble I have now is that YouTube tells me to says these are the comments you haven't responded to. So I go right, okay, I'll go through those and respond to those. And it goes, that's it. You've responded to them all. But what it doesn't tell me is that somebody's responded to a response, and show me the ones that now need a further response. So that's sometimes I miss those. So if you're one of those people who answered something I wrote and then you never get a response back, I do apologise for that. Occasionally, I I do whiz through to see what there is and then I find something from like you know four weeks ago some question I think oh dear I missed that one <laughs> but uh, bear with me on that as well I'm going to try and improve that maybe YouTube will improve that as well so they'll give me notification of responses to responses so I can tell when somebody's responded anyway apart from that I do like your comments so please do put them down there and um, yeah we'll see how it goes in the future but thank you very much for watching see you in the next video I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting there are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below and if you'd like to subscribe to this channel just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos thanks for watching